together for a common cause. I even read where the telephone operators that were on strike crossed the picket line. They put their personal differences aside to come together for a common cause. I would like to suggest to you that the Texas City fires were not the only light that was lit on that day, but I could read and see the light in a lot of our people in this community that was shining even brighter. In closing, when I was young, I was in junior high, I had a coach by the name of Coach Jesse Haggerty. Coach Jesse Haggerty was a pretty stern basketball coach. And he taught me that if I ever wanted to be a successful basketball player, the first thing I need to learn how to do is rebound. Well, I would like to suggest to all of us that the only reason any of us are standing here today is because the people of this community knew how to rebound. They took a licking and they kept on ticking. They were knocked down, but they weren't knocked out. Theodore Roosevelt once said, courage is not having the strength to go on.
Jefferson, but uh, I do want to recognize, uh, I see my fellow commissioners here, uh, Orthea Jones, Orthea. and uh, Bruce Clawson, Mr. Bruce Clawson, Mr. Phil Roberts, and Commissioner Deanne Haney. And we have former Commissioner Lynn Ray Ellison. Lynn Ray, good to see you, as always. And former Commissioner Anthony Lincoln, Lincoln, good to see you. Uh, both those gentlemen played a vital part, even during the explosion and in the, the, uh, the growth of our city, as the two reverends have talked about. We're lucky today, uh, I'm going to ad lib a little bit. Uh, usually we don't do this, but we don't always have somebody that's 93 years old here and wants to say something about the explosion. Mr. Mr. Leonard, would you like to come up and have it say a few words? I think he's having to be coached. I hope I can do that when I'm back. <laughs> I'm 94. Really. Uh, I was wrong. 94. <laughs> really, I just turned 94. Uh, um, I happened to be, <clears throat> yeah, come home from uh, the, the Navy during World War II, and um, I didn't have didn't have a job yet. And I'm thinking, I'm, and a friend of ours by the, by the name Mr. Newland asked us to come up here and go to work with his longshore. And not knowing too much about long shore, we decided to come in. And we went in and boarded that ship that day. And uh, I had lost a ship exactly like that during the war. The Japanese had sunk our ship in, on February the 10th of 43. And uh, I smelled something, and I tried to tell them that there was a fire in the hole in there. And they said, no, there's no fire in there. And, it being a French ship, it was for, for, for pretty hard for them to understand what I was trying to tell them. So they finally come in and got to their attention. We tried to put the fire out and everything else, and finally someone that we could not know, have no effect on it. The, all the fire department that we just mentioned while well, a minute ago came in, and of course, our boss, Mr. Newland, said, we might as well let the professionals do their job. Well, let's get off the ship. So we got off the ship and everything else. And so we decided, I decided that, that two friends of mine that had also had gotten out of the Navy during World War II, we, we, we were leaving as the ship blew up. It pushed my automobile to one side of the car and, uh, and I left it. And uh, we, but we made it all right. Wade Wilson, one of my friends, had his arm sticking out of the car and he got cut up in his arm. But outside of that, we made it fine. We continued on with the deal. I came back again to help that night of all the, of all the people. One of the greatest effects that's been on my mind ever since was the young children that had come up there. There was a board fence uh, there. They, they were all sitting up there watching the fire. They had never seen them. And when that thing exploded, well, it just, uh, well, I just happened to be not too far away from there, and uh, it was really impossible. I made every trial that was made for that deal. It took 10 years of trials from 1947 to 1957. The last trial was in Houston, Texas, and they found that the Republic of France guilty of negligence aboard that ship. They say so. One thing else. So later on, they said, I called, my thing was over with, I got dismissed. And later on, I got a letter that says that France had objected to the decision that was made that I would be called upon again to, um, <clears throat> to come and testify. And all I had to testify was that I saw the fire and I tried to help put it out, and so did the rest of it, you know. But uh, they, said that we would be calling you later and again to start this again. Uh, to this day, I have never been called, so evidently it was settled out of court. But, I, but anyhow, they, uh, this is, like I say, you know, this has always stood on my mind because, you know, it's just something. I thought I had seen something pretty great when I was in the Navy, 
but nothing like the Texas City explosion. I had to come home to see the greatest and the worst thing I've ever seen in my lifetime that day. I did come back. We went back home, me and, and two of my friends, and I decided, well, let's go back and help. I know that they're going to need some help. So we came back that night, and I did help try to get some of the people off. When the second one exploded that night, they were all thing. But this is about all that I have to say about it. But it's been a pleasure coming up here. It, but it has stayed on my mind all this time because I lost a lot of my great friends. And of all things, some of them had just gotten back home from World War II. I want to thank you, and I appreciate you having me up here to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Well, Mr. Member, thank you for your service and thank you for those words. Uh, last but not least, uh, as I always do at the end of this, I, I thank you all for being here to remember this day and honor this day and, and taking the time out of your schedule to be here. I want to thank the firemen and policemen and our first responders for what they do for us every day. We're lucky enough that where we go to bed every night, we can turn that off. These, these men and women are here protecting us 24-7, 365 days a year, and I can't thank them enough. And I also want to thank all of you for allowing me to let you let me be your mayor, because this is the greatest job in the world, and I really appreciate being able to serve this city. And it's the greatest city in the world. Let's enjoy our holy week. I want to wish you and your families all a really nice Easter holiday and also a time of worship with your family. So thank you. And uh, God was awful good to us. It's been a little bit, but it didn't rain. So <laughs> Let me give you one of my business cards. Do you, do you have one? Yeah, I do. It might be a little bit up, but I have one. There you go. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, I thought that football stadium is a beautiful building. Yes, beautiful building. Well, we're right down the street, so you know, in this area, is give me a power. Okay. Hey, Just to meet you. You still play basketball? Yeah, every now and then. I do a lot of running.